Welcome to section 39 of the viruses. This is the overview figure showing all the viruses you need to know for step one. In this section, we will be discussing the next picornavirus, which is echovirus. Our echovirus story takes place outside a cave. Some people like to yell into caves to hear their own echo. This villainous peacock is doing just that. He's literally yelling echo into the cave to hear his own echo. This activity will help you remember that this is echovirus we're dealing with. Now notice that positive looking rainbow over to the left. That indicates that echovirus is a positive sense virus. Positive rainbow for positive sense. And also notice the nice red and warm colors of the scene. This color scheme indicates that echovirus is an RNA virus. So red warm colors for RNA virus. Now this villainous peacock is in fact a peacock. Peacock sounds like picornavirus. So each picornavirus you see in physio will include this evil peacock. So peacock, picornavirus. And look at that big walking stick he's holding. It has an icosahedral gem on the top. You will come to realize that this picornavirus peacock doesn't go anywhere without its trusty icosahedral cane. Anyways, this gem will help you remember that the capsid for echovirus has an icosahedral shape to it. So icosahedral gem for icosahedral capsid. As a villain, he has a whole crew of henchmen doing his bidding. See this line of henchmen here? Well, this line will help you remember that echovirus is a linear virus. So again, line of henchmen for linear virus. Now let's look closer at their shirts. Their shirts say IRS on them, like Internal Revenue Service. Like oppressive kings in the Middle Ages, this villainous peacock oppresses his subjects through excessive taxation. It may not be called the IRS back then, but most of us are familiar with the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS. So IRS is what we will call these tax enforcers. Now I'm not suggesting that the IRS of the United States is villainous in any way. It's just a nice way to help you remember something important about echovirus. IRS will help you remember IRES as in internal ribosomal entry site. If you need a refresher on this concept, please see the polio virus lecture. Now this villainous emperor really can't oppress anybody if there's nobody to oppress. So let's bring on these oppressed pigs of our story. Look at them, all scared of the brutal enforcement of the peacock. Interestingly, these little piggies like to be naked at all times. Thankfully, we have included a black box to cover up their nakedness. Anyways, these naked pigs indicate that echovirus is a naked virus. So naked pigs for naked virus. Not all the pigs stand idly by just being nervous and naked. In fact, this bold piggy is taking matters into his own hands and choking his oppressor. What is he choking the IRS guy with? Some intestines, pig intestines actually. If you look closely at the bags the IRS workers are carrying, you can see that they are labeled pig intestines. It's actually the lunch they've prepared. They wear the label proudly in order to intimidate these pigs, as if to say, we eat pig intestines, so watch out. Now this pig wasn't gonna stand for it, so he has taken some intestines from the bag and started choking this guy with it. Anyways, these intestines will help you remember enteroviruses. Enteroviruses, such as echovirus, poliovirus, and coxsackievirus, all replicate in the intestines. Interestingly, in case you're curious, they can also replicate inside the tonsils. But just remember that these intestines stand for enterovirus. Another fact about enteroviruses is that they're transmitted via the fecal oral route. That makes sense because they replicate inside the intestines, so they would likely shed via the intestines as well. To help you remember the fecal oral transmission, we have shown this alligator stepping in poop. Look how disgusted and angry he is. So remember, alligator stepping in poop stands for fecal oral transmission. Having stepped in poop, he's pretty angry. Look how angry he is. He's frothing at the mouth with rage. This is to help you remember that enteroviruses are also transmitted via saliva. As mentioned before, since enteroviruses can replicate inside the tonsils, that means that salivary droplets can also be a mode of transmission. So again, salivating guy stands for salivary transmission. Now that first bold piggy has actually inspired some of his comrades. Look at this guy also fighting back. Look at him throw that rock at the henchman's head. That's a pretty impressive blow. It even knocked his hat off. This blow to the head represents meningitis, and the fact that he's wearing a hat reinforces this idea. Meningitis is an important association to be familiar with, so whenever you think of enterovirus, think meningitis. So again, rock hitting the head of the henchman with the hat stands for meningitis. Now let's bring on some asteroids descending to the Earth. This gigantic one right here in the front has broken up into a bunch of smaller pieces, which you can see scattering around. This giant asteroid breaking into smaller ones represents the fact that the host ribosomes will translate the viral RNA into a single giant viral protein. Then, proteases cleave the giant protein product into a bunch of smaller functional viral proteins. So giant asteroid breaking into tiny pieces stands for giant protein cleaving into smaller functional proteins. Now one of these small asteroid pieces has smashed to the ground and knocked these two pigs into the mud. Look at them sinking in there, helpless and naked. This represents the fact that naked viruses can be brought into the host cell via endocytosis. 
Viruses that are enveloped, on the other hand, have a lipid bilayer that fuses to the lipid bilayer of the host cell. But anyways, naked viruses, just like these naked pigs, enter the cell via endocytosis. Now that we've covered all the material in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A laboratory researcher is studying traits associated with picornaviruses. She identifies a member of the picornavirus family that replicates within pyres patches and can cause meningitis. Which of the following statements is true regarding this virus? A. Proteins surrounding the genome curve continuously around a center point. B. The virus is considered one of the enteroviruses. C. There is an absence of uracil in the viral genome. Or D. The virion contains an enzyme for synthesizing nucleic acids. Now the correct answer is B. The virus is considered one of the enteroviruses. From the question, we know we're dealing with a picornavirus, since that was stated explicitly. And we know that we're dealing with an enterovirus, because it replicates inside the pyres patches and can cause meningitis. Pyres patches are lymphatic tissue within the small intestines, specifically the ileum. You may recall from the GI anatomy chapter the phrase Pepe's brain dump. Pyres patches, the PE and PE, are within the ileum, the I, so Pepe's. Pyres patches, ileum. Whereas the Brunner's glands, BR, are in the duodenum, or DU, so Pepe's brain dump. And recall that enteroviruses, as we remember with these intestines, replicate inside the intestines and can cause meningitis. So again, the correct answer is choice B. Now choice A is wrong because this describes a helical capsid. Proteins that surround the genome are considered the capsid. And a capsid that is continuous and surrounding a center point describes a helical capsid, which would look like this. This is continuous and revolving or curving around a center point. And we know that picornaviruses have an icosahedral capsid, not a helical capsid. So A is wrong. Now choice C is wrong because this describes DNA. RNA includes uracil whereas DNA lacks this. So choice C was describing a DNA virus. And we know that picornaviruses are RNA. Remember that red warm color scheme? Finally, choice D is wrong because this enzyme describes RNA dependent RNA polymerase, implying that this virus carries its own RNA polymerase. Now recall from previous lectures that only negative sense viruses carry their own RNA polymerase. And picornaviruses are positive sense. Remember that positive rainbow? And that's all you need to know about echovirus.